Hi, welcome back. My name is Brandon Isaacs. I'm a regional salesman for Teva Corporation. I'm here today with Caleb Coots. He's our plant biologist. Um, for right now, we're going to talk about trace minerals. Um, there's a lot of noise in the marketplace about adding this and that, and uh, hopefully we can help alleviate some of that confusion. Um, Caleb, what do you think about the term trace mineral, first of all? I think the, the term trace mineral, it's a little misleading. Trace mineral kind of makes it sound like these are these outlying uh, nutrients that are not really important. You don't, you don't have to worry about them, but that's not the case. These are more aptly called micronutrients. They're still essential for your plant. They're still essential for the plant's growth and development. They're just needed in smaller amounts, and that's why they're called micro rather than your macronutrients like NPK. So your NPK, you may need like, let's say 20 pounds of nitrogen, but you may only need two pounds of boron. So they're, they're just as important, just in lesser quantities. So with a, with a term like micronutrient, um, it's such a small thing. How much difference could it possibly make on your yield? Uh, they can absolutely be the limiting factor in your yield at times. Uh, there's this thing called the law of the minimum. We've got an example here. So you can see we've got this cup and each, um, each piece is a different nutrient. And when I get to what we've do, we, we're saying we have the least amount of zinc. So when we get to zinc, that's when water is going to start pouring out of this cup. And this the water is your yield. So if I'd had everything balanced and everything was up here at the top, I'd, I'd, my potential yield's up here. But as you can see, since I don't have it balanced, when I run out of that zinc, I start losing yield. And I start, you know, hurting myself. So they're, they're just as important. And... They, they do very vital things in the plant. You can think of it, uh, manganese is essential for the production of chlorophyll. Without manganese, you're not doing photosynthesis, which is very important to your plant. Uh, zinc is, it helps in protein synthesis. That's why your nitrogen loving plants like corn need zinc. It helps turn all that nitrogen into proteins. Your, and boron, I mean, it helps with cell wall structure and so you have better stability. And then it helps actually fill out your test weight by getting nutrients into your seed and your fruit during your reproductive stages. And then with all of the micronutrients, trace minerals, they, it's further complicated with what kind of forms it is all in. Um, what are some different forms that guys are gonna see and, and what are gonna be, what's gonna be some of the better ways to go about it? Uh, well, the two big ones out there, there are oxides and there are sulfates. So your oxides um, are in a liquid form. Uh, they are more readily available to the plant they are more reactive once they're in the plant and they have no problem mixing with anything. You mix them with other traces, you can mix them with fertilizer, you don't really have a problem. Then you have your sulfates, which are better if you're using them in a dry form. Uh, the problem with oxides in a dry form is that they, they don't want to break down the soil very easily so they, they, don't, they rarely get to your plant, but a sulfate is better strictly in the sense that once it's in the soil it'll break down and get to your plant. Uh, if I had my choice, I would always choose use a liquid oxide over a dry sulfate. Just like I said, oxides, they're, they're better for your plant once they're in there and they get in better. And as we talk about in our liquid versus dry fertilizer, liquid is just more efficient to begin with. So you want to make your, it's better all around for your plant. And then you also are going to see different types of ways that, are, that your micronutrients are chelated. Um, what are some different chelating agents and what does chelating even mean? Well, your chelators, we add those to your micronutrients to help get them into your plant. Uh, chelator literally means claw, and what it's doing is it grabs onto these micros and helps truck them into your plant. Uh, the, the best man-made chelator out there is going to be EETA uh, because it literally it grabs onto these and helps get them in, as opposed to other chelators like your citric acid or your hypnoglutinate, which artificially change the pH of a solution so that it's at a pH where micros are more normally available. It's just causing favorable conditions rather than actually getting a micro into the plant like EDTA will. Well, thank you for explaining that for everybody. Uh, and thank you for joining us. If you have any further questions, feel free to contact myself, any local representative that you might have. If you don't already have a local representative, feel free to reach us at www.tivacorporation.com. Again, thank you and have a great day.